Uh, good evening and welcome. This meeting of October 13, 2014 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Mr. Barton? Here. Mr. Bajin? Here. Mr. Daniel? Here. Mr. Prohaska? Here. Ms. Ryan? Here. Ms. Seeker? Here. Mr. Striel? Here. Great, thank you. Uh, we are pleased to welcome uh, Vicki Sullivan and a group from Bryant Elementary to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So please step forward, introduce yourselves with your outside voice so we can hear you. Paige Abbott's from fifth grade. Um, Brent Kramer and I'm from fourth grade. Logan Cummins for, um, from second grade. I'm Anya and I'm from fifth grade. Natalie and I'm from fifth grade. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I asked Mrs. Sullivan, she said that is not their outside voices. <laughs> Thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded to that the Board of Education approve the agenda as submitted. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the annual organizational meeting of September 8, 2014 as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the minutes of the annual organizational meeting of September 8, 2014 as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Brings us to board salutes, Mr. Baitin. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to take a moment and uh, highlight there was a very interesting article in the TH uh, about 10 days ago regarding the um, uh, the uh, uh, percentage of pre-kindergarten to third grade students who are chronically absent and uh, as a district um, we're about six percent of those kids in that age group that have chronic absenteeism and I want to uh, congratulate and uh, salute uh, Shirley Horseman and uh, Principal Ed Glazer at uh, Audubon they uh, undertook a program to have teachers and to encourage teachers to call students who are chronically absent and uh, check on them, see how they are, yep. and uh, how you're feeling, and we want you to come back. And uh, I, I applaud that effort. That, that's doing something a little outside of your normal uh, tasks, and I think that shows that not only do we care as a district, but we see the importance that these kids, and, and, and there's lots of research to support this, that uh, these kids, if they are chronically absent during this period of time, they fall behind and they fall behind quickly. Um, so uh, appreciate the efforts of Ms. Horseman and the rest of the uh, principals who uh, undertake that particular program. Thank you, Mr. Baitin. Mr. Prohaska? Yeah, I'd like, uh, thank you, Mr. Donahue. I'd like to give a salute out to uh, those that attended the Bob Timmerman uh, dedication at uh, Timmerman Field at Hempstead High School. Uh, Mr. Barton did a very nice job of uh, uh, account, accounting for Bob's uh, many accomplishments, etc. Very good job, Mr. Barton. Mr. St uh, Ryan Gans, uh, nice job of uh, dedicating the field to him and everything. We had a little problem there with the wind blowing the uh, the cover off, but uh, other than that, it was well deserved uh, for a uh, coach that spent many many years here in the school district. It was attended by very, very, very many ex-coaches, uh, teachers, administrators, etc. And uh, I know that we have a lot of things in our school district that are named after um, individuals, and I think uh, this one was uh, notably uh, recognized very well. So thank you. Thank you. Any other board salutes? Okay. I move the Board of Education to suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education suspend the rules of order and go into open forum. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I would welcome anybody in our audience that wishes to address the school board to do so at this time. I move the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education reinstate the rules of order and return to regular session. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. President, I move the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve those items listed in the consent agenda. Uh, are there uh, anybody that would like to have anything removed to, for a further discussion from that consent agenda? Okay, hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries, thank you. Uh, this brings us to um, sit back at comfortable. We've got a facilities and support services committee report from Mr. Barton and we're wrapping up some projects finally that obviously have a have lengthy uh, motions to them but I think we also have uh, Mr. Burkhart's uh, posed and ready to help us uh, with a little bit of more color behind some of the uh, some of the other uh, change orders etc that we have going on within the district. So Mr. Barton. First we're gonna I guess we're gonna lead off with the spending authority update and so Kevin is not here, but Stan, can you synopsize? He had to, he had to leave. Okay. He had a medical situation. He just got called, so he had to take off. Okay. 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 He, is our his sheet sitting there? Yeah, That'd be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I don't know if the color notes. Just a brief overview of the spending authority. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess with this on, can you hear me, uh, everyone? Okay, so as everybody uh, on the board and maybe not at home uh, understands, the school district operates on spending authority. We are allowed to spend X number of dollars per year per student, regardless of what uh, money we may have available to us. So spending authority is a, a significant um, uh, issue for us. And so every year we forecast um, where we're at. In October, we sort of wrap up how we finished the year uh, that has just finished, and as well as in the next board meeting, we'll forecast where we're headed for uh, this fiscal year. So one of the things, and I know I won't do certainly the uh, uh, level of depth that, that Kevin would have done, um, so I may ask him to come back. I know he's shared this at support services, but there really are three issues, uh, or three areas that we uh, watch closely. One is cash, one is fund balance, and the most important is an authorized budget. So you will see that in our authorized budget, um, this past year we had uh, $117 million that we had authorized excluding carryover. So when we take the number of students we have versus the number of dollars we are allowed to spend, as well as some categorical funding and some weighting with uh, special education students, those sorts of things, we would have been allowed to, authorize to spend $117 million, or just over $117 million. However, in previous years, if we don't spend our full allocation, uh, we are allowed to carry over that spending authority. So that's the, the idea of uh, a carryover balance. So even though we overspent our budget by $2.4 million, that still leaves us with a savings account, if you will, or a um, uh, unspent balance of about $13 million. So we know that uh, from time to time. We, uh, in some years, we, we spend less than we're allowed to because we know we'll have years where we'll need to uh, spend more than um, the authorized budget would allow for us to do. That's why it's important for us to maintain an unspent balance. So in the unspent balance world, that would bring us, or did bring us to $13.2 million of unspent uh, authorized budget. Our goal is to be in the range of about $9.9 .9 million. So it is important to remember that we don't want to save money just to save money. We want to spend the dollars that we need to adequately educate our students uh, in the year that we're authorized to spend those dollars. But we also need to, to carry uh, um, some flexibility in case there's a, an emergency, if you will. One of the things that we also track is what's called a solvency ratio. So our solvency ratio right now is 18.5%. Our goal 
is between 5 and 15 percent. Obviously, we would uh, look at uh, probably closer to 10 percent uh, as being that solvency ratio. So again, very healthy in uh, where we are at currently. And then lastly, I would point out cash. And again, cash has <coughs> limited meaning because even though we may have it, uh, we are not authorized mm -hmm. to spend it. Um, part of the, what we have done uh, in the past three years is reduce our uh, tax levy rate because we have cash but not the uh, the authority to spend it and we have committed to the community that when we don't need those dollars we won't we won't uh, we won't collect them we'll look at our, our uh, taxing authority that trend uh, can't continue forever and we've tried to be very clear about that but we've also been clear about on the years that it could uh, we that we could um, reduce that we would one of the things that I would point out here um, is Two years ago, uh, we were given a two plus two equals four uh, scenario from the state. Would traditionally we've had about a four percent growth in our uh, per student spending allowance or uh, our um, Mr. Colpitz, what's the new word? Allowable allowable supplemental aid. supplemental state aid. Thank you. I was having a <laughs> moment there. So in supplemental state aid, well, we were given a two plus two. So in other words, two two percent growth in that state aid and two percent one-time money in that growth. That did not account for all of the categorical funds I was talking about. So it was really about six hundred thousand dollars less than it would have been in that year for um, additional spending authority. And that balloons next year because it's amortized or as you can <coughs> going forward to about 1.5, 1.6 million dollars. So over time we will need to look at how we are spending um, our dollars, not over time, but currently looking at that now to accommodate that growing deficit that was created by that two plus two because our expenses um, by and large were above the two percent rate. So just kind of give you some, some synopsis of why these numbers are red. Again, it's planned, it's well within our budget and our ability to afford it. It still keeps us significantly above our goal. However, that trend, and if Kevin were here, he probably would have a, a a, a diagram that shows a downward trend, we need for that to level off. We need to get into our goal range and then level off. We need to, we can't continue to overspend our budget, but at the same time, we don't need to save dollars that we could be putting into uh, programming for our current students. All right. Question? Yes. Yeah, so, how does that relate to our uh, interfund loan transfer? Can you kind of uh, relay that to us a little bit? That's where it's going to get a little bit sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us the yeah. Re so we, we, we will. Uh, we'll, I'll have Kevin come back and, and uh, do a better job of this than, than I am when it comes to that. But, pardon. It's, well, do you have a specific question, Jim? Just in general, like uh, what that means, uh, like transferring funds to the general fund to the general sales tax. Fund. Sure. So, you know, we have to 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 move dollars between funds from time to time to to make these uh, so we don't overspend. Uh, one fund or underspend another. A lot of this, the uh, funding we receive from the state is what we call categorical. It can only be spent on a specific uh, item. And those, those, and correct me where I speak wrong here, Jordan, but those funds aren't always timely in when they come. And so sometimes we have to do a transfer and then we make that right when we receive those funds from the, from the state. And since technically it would require a board resolution every time that Kevin needed to do that, yes. this resolution allows Kevin to do that as needed, as needed. As needed. up to okay. two million dollars is the way the resolution knowing that at the end of the year he has to have it all that will all balance all out and it's all subject to an audit so yep. it's not that those dollars stay there but it, it, it it's a kind of a, a flow issue as we receive dollars um, making sure that we have access to the dollars that we need at the end of the year though that's all balanced out and subject to an audit right you've explained that very well I didn't sound very sticky <laughs> I'm glad you didn't Next up, do it on a unicycle. Um, <laughs> While juggling, okay. Okay, good. thanks. All right, good. Okay, next item is adopt the interfund loan resolution. I move that the Board of Education approve the following resolution for interfund loans. Whereas, pursuant to the Iowa Department of Education's declaratory <coughs> order, 
all loans between funds in a school district within a fiscal year must be accomplished through official board action and may not be accomplished until the board authorizes the loan by resolution. Whereas the board deems it necessary and desirable to make loans between funds within the current fiscal year. Whereas the board wishes to take action to adopt a resolution authorizing loans between funds. Now therefore be it resolved by the board section one. The board of directors of the Dubuque Community School District of Dubuque County of the State of Iowa makes a motion to authorize an interfund loan from the general fund of the sales tax fund in an amount up to $2 million with an interest rate of 0.25%. Section 2, the board secretary, superintendent, and or business manager are authorized and directed to take all appropriate actions to comply with the requirements of the Iowa Department of Education's declaratory order regarding interfund inter loans. Section 3, all resolutions or orders are parts thereof in conflict herewith be and the same are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict. Second. Been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the, res the following resolution for interfund loans as read. Are there any questions? Mike, the only thing I'd point out is that in section two, it says point blank, comply with the requirements of the Iowa Department of Education's declaratory order regarding interfund loans. Yeah, so, so the provisions are there and there's a process that you adhere to. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. I have a question about section one. Uh, it says the tra transfer from the general fund to the sales tax fund. Is that the 1% sales tax fund? That's yes. Correct. That's right. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve the renaming of Jones Campus to Alta Vista Campus. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the renaming of Jones Campus to Alta Vista Campus. Discussion? <laughs> well, there oh. should be some kind of explanation on I this. I guess Barton campus? The, 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 the bottom line is, no. we, upon research, we just decided at the uh, facilities meeting that uh, after a, a long period of time where we recognized the building as Jones Building, that because Jones, is, Jones has an interesting history. Uh, Jones was a Southern sympathizer. He was he had sons that marched off to fight for the Confederacy and <laughs> just a number of things. And it, and it just made sense with the, the, the changing needs of that building. They also, I think, a new identity was something that they sought out as well. So calling it the Alta Vista campus was something that seemed to make sense at this point. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great synopsis. Perfect. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve the district's fiscal year 2014 request to the Iowa School Budget Review Committee, SBRC, for allowable growth and supplemental aid for the negative special education balance for the 2013-14 school year in the amount of $3,402,370. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the district's fiscal year 2014 request to the Iowa School Budget Review Committee for allowable growth and supplemental aid for the negative special education balance for the 2013-14 school year in the amount of $3,402,370. That was the number that, Stan, that you had pointed out in your, in your previous... Yes, uh, so special education... Uh, we were allowed to to uh, have a deficit there, mm -hmm. and every UEN, I believe that's not an exaggeration, probably almost all school districts in the state have a deficit because of the, the cost of running special education programming. So we were allowed to run that deficit. We are at a level where it's starting to, to be a, a, of concern, so we are looking at that and, and wanting, knowing we will probably never exist without some level of special <coughs> education deficit uh, needing to uh, Look at uh, uh, how s some of that programming, but uh. I have a question on that. What's been the past track record on like supplemental aid? Has the state granted that aid, or is this a first time occurrence? Or for you're so about, you're talking about this special ed, yeah, special ed, ed funding? yeah for the special yeah. ed funding that is so that is um, granted through the school budget review committee. On a yearly basis, <coughs> and so that has happened. Granted, it's, it's like it's, yes, it, it it's special education has never be granted, granted that, so to speak. When Absolutely, I've occurs. not ever been in a school district where that didn't okay. occur. Is this just an annual total for one year? Yes, yeah. correct. Okay. The last, yeah, the last okay. year. Any other questions? 
And this doesn't include the any keystone payment or anything. Well, oh, Keystone okay. are, are flow-through dollars, and so uh, technically I don't believe they come through the special education budget, mm -hmm. um, but the, the total budget that you saw previously did include flow-through dollars that went to Keystone. Right. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank I move, you. I move that the Board of Education approve change order number five to Conlin construction on the Hampstead High School renovation project in the increased amount of $41,809.84. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number five to Conlin construction on the Hempstead High School renovation project in the increased amount of $41,809.84. Mr. Burkhardt. I'd like to uh, start off by reminding you that change order one, two, and three were credits. We achieved credits of $547,900 at the start of the project, knowing that the day was going to come when we would have some unforeseen conditions and need the money back. If you approve the $41,000 in front of you tonight, it'll still leave a balance of $506,000 credit on the project. I would also like to point out we're about 16 months into the project. We have about 14 to 16 months to go depending on what winter does to us. And I'd also like to point out that 60% of that $40,000 is in poor soil conditions and in gas line relocation. You know, going forward in the second half of this game, I'm, <coughs> I'm cautiously optimistic as we go into the second half. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. There's a lot of small uh, expenses on there, and I'd be happy to answer uh, ha answer them rather than go through the entire list. Any questions I can answer? No, because you're really almost out of the ground now. Pretty much everything else is above. That's usually where a lot yep. of your unforeseen. And that's right. Yeah. We're again cautiously optimistic. Charlie, and myself, and uh, the, the team keep a real close eye on the budget. Yeah. So bottom line is things are on time and to date under budget. Exactly. We had a rough winter last uh, year, as you know, and I think Charlie would back me up on this. We were probably three to four weeks behind, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's turned around now, and yeah. uh, if we can get a warm winter behind us, we'll be real happy come but spring. Charlie will work on that. Yeah. Yeah, he's got that on his to-do <laughs> list. Like that. We'd all appreciate that. Yeah, we, yeah. All that we need a motion for a warm winter. No, we don't. We've already got a motion on the table. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the average temperature this winter is 48 <laughs> okay. degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll remove that. Mo I'll okay. remove, repeal that motion. I move that the Board of Education approve change order number nine to Ports and Construction Incorporated on the Kennedy Addition Remodel Project in the increased amount of nine thousand four hundred thirty-one dollars and fifty-nine cents. Fifth and fifty-nine cents. Yes. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number nine to Ports and Construction Inc. on the Kennedy Addition Remodel Project in the increased amount of nine thousand four hundred thirty-one dollars and fifty-nine cents. Again, I'd be happy to answer any questions there on the change order, but I'd like to point out this project will start closing out in November and December, and from my numbers uh, before I came over, we're going to close out about uh, a little over $100,000 under budget. That's great. More good news. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next is the first of four final acceptances. We're finally getting some check marks on some of these big projects we've been chasing after here. I move that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution for final acceptance and closing final project costs for the following public improvement contract with Ports of Construction Incorporated. Whereas on June 10th, 2013, Dubuque Community School District entered into a construction contract with Ports of Construction Incorporated of Dubuque, Iowa, contractor for the con construction of certain public improvements, generally described as a Washington Middle School multi-purpose room addition project. And where on <coughs> September 10th, 2012, Dubuque Community School District entered into a contract with Straka Johnson Architects PC Architect for architectural engineering design services associated with the above project. And whereas on September 25th, 2014, Architect filed a certificate with Dubuque Community School District certifying that the contractor had substantially completed the construction of said public improvements in accordance with the terms and conditions of the contract and plans and specifications. Whereas the architect has now submitted subsequent report, change order, bonds, and pay application to Dubuque Community School District recommending that the project be accepted by the district as finally complete. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Dubuque Community School District, Section 1, that said reports and documents of the architect are hereby approved and adopted. 
Section 2, that said public improvement is hereby approved and accepted as having been fully completed in accordance with said plan, specifications, and form of contract. Section 3, that the total contract cost of the improvement yet payable under said contract with Ports and Construction Incorporated is hereby determined to be $5,549.90. Section 4, that $5,549.90 of the total contract cost yet paid shall be retained for a period of 30 days following this board's action to finally accept this public improvement project pursuant to the requirements of Iowa Code 573.14. If at the end of the 30-day period claims are on file as provided, the Dubuque Community School District shall continue to retain from the unpaid funds a sum equal to double the total amount of all claims on file. The remaining balance of the unpaid fund, or if no claims are in file, the entire unpaid fund should be released and paid to the contractor in accordance with Iowa law. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt the resolution for final acceptance and closing final project costs for the public improvement contract with Ports and Construction uh, for Washington Middle School multi-purpose room addition as read. Any discussion? I would just like to add that uh, in May of 2014, the adjusted budget for that project was $1,480,000. So the project's going to be about $85,000 under budget. <coughs> Plus, it's going to leave a positive balance of $58,000 in the soft cost fund. Again, good news, yes. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve change order number two to Geisler Brothers Company on the Senior Library Roof and Insulation Replacement and HVAC Upgrade Project in the increased amount of $37,995.10. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number two to Geisler Brothers Company on the Senior Library Roof and Insulation Replacement and HVAC Upgrade Project in the increased amount $37,995.10. And that was all associated with masonry uh, restoration, the parapet walls, which we discussed and showed photos and facilities. And we had a $75,000 contingency. So if you approve this, we'll end up with a $37,000 positive balance on that project also. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education authorize the Board President and Secretary to sign the property damage release for the Washington Roof Replacement Project. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education authorize the Board President and Secretary to sign the property damage release for the Washington Roof Replacement Project. And I Quick would just commentary. add this release has been reviewed uh, by Doug Henry and Terry Friedman. The 14877 covers all expenses uh, incurred by the district on the night of June 29th. Uh, associated with that roof project and the water in the upper floor. But all our expenses over time, uh, IT, everything's covered at that amount. Yeah, absolutely. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, um, I move that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution for final acceptance and closing final project costs for the public improvement contract with Geisler Brothers. Whereas on March 10, 2014, Dubuque Community School District entered into a construction contract with Geisler Brothers of Dubuque, Iowa, contractor for the construction of certain public improvements generally described as the Washington Middle School Roof Replacement Project, project. and whereas on October 14, 2013, Dubuque Community School District entered into a contract with IIWPC, architect for architectural engineering design services associated with the above project and whereas on September 29, 2014 architect filed a certificate with Dubuque Community School District certifying that the contractor had substantially completed the construction of said public improvements in accordance with the terms and conditions of the contract and plans and specifications. Whereas the architect has now submitted subsequent report change order bonds and pay application to Dubuque Community School District recommending that the project be, ac be accepted by the district as finally complete. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Dubuque Community School District, Section 1, that said reports and documents of the architect are hereby approved and adopted. Section 2, that said public improvement is hereby approved and accepted as having been fully completed in accordance with said plan, specifications, and form of contract. Section 3, that the total contract cost of the improvement yet payable under said contract with Geisler Brothers is hereby determined to be $8,723.40. Section 4, that $8,723.40 of the total contract cost yet paid shall be retained for a period of 30 days following this board's action to finally accept this public improvement project pursuant to the requirements of Iowa Code 573.14. 
If at the end of the 30-day period claims are on file as provided, the Dubuque Community School District shall continue to retain from the unpaid funds a sum equal to double the total amount of all claims on file. The remaining balance of the unpaid fund, or if no claims are on file, the entire unpaid fund should be released and paid to the contractor in accordance with Iowa law. Second. It's been moved and seconded uh, that the Board of Education adopt the, re the following resolution for final acceptance and closing final costs for the public improvement contract with Geisler Brother Brothers for the Washington Middle School replacement project as read. And this project uh, had one change order for $29,000, and that was also parapet wall uh, improvements. We had a $24,000 contingency. So I think in my first time in four years, I've got to tell you, this project closed $5,400 over budget. Yeah. But remember, <laughs> this is one of our many summer projects, so we make it up with the other credits that I've been explaining tonight. So <laughs> overall, we're still balancing out. Yeah. Well, I think you're still in the credit. Yeah, Bill, Bill and Charlie and, and their crew do a great job yep. of keeping their eye on every expense. And if it had to be over budget, I'm yep. confident that it had to be over budget because there's long-term gain there. Yep. It is a, a it's a repair walls. for decades. Pitfall yep. the, the yep. pitfall of the parapet yep. walls. Right. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve change order number three to Clower Development Corporation doing business as Clower Construction Company on the Central Kitchen Loading Dock Project in the decreased amount. Mm -hmm of one thousand five hundred dollars second it's been moved and seconded that the board of education approved change order number three to clower development corporation dba clower construction company on the central kitchen loading dock project in the decreased amount of one thousand five hundred dollars and that is because we deferred the epoxy floor installation to next spring to allow the concrete dry down the proper moisture okay. all in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 opposed motion carries I move that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution for final acceptance and closing final project cost for the public improvement contract with Tricon General Construction. Whereas on May 12, 2014, Dubuque Community School District entered into a con construction contract with Tricon General Construction of Dubuque, Iowa, contractor, for the construction of certain public improvements, generally described as the elementary <laughs> school computer lab project, project. And whereas on December 9, 2013, Dubuque Community School District entered into a contract with Straka Johnson Architects PC Architect for architectural engineering design services associated with the above project. And whereas on September 26, 2014, Architect filed a certificate with Dubuque Community School District certifying that the contractor had substantially completed the construction of said public improvements in accordance with the, with the terms and conditions of the contract and plans and specifications. Whereas the architect has now submitted subsequent report, change order, bonds, and pay application to Dubuque Community School District recommending that this project be accepted by the district as finally complete. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Dubuque Community School District Section 1, that said reports and documents of the architect are hereby approved and adopted. Section 2, that said public improvement is hereby approved and accepted as having been fully completed in accordance with said plan specifications in the form of contract. Section 3, that the total contract cost of the improvement yet payable under said contract with Tricon General Construction is hereby determined to be $7,494.07. Section 4, that $7,494.07 of the total contract cost yet paid should be retained for a period of 30 days followed following this board's action to finally accept this public improvement project pursuant to the requirements of Iowa Code 573.14. If at the end of the 30-day period claims are on file as provided, the Dubuque Community School District shall continue to retain from the unpaid funds a sum equal to double the total amount of all claims on file. The remaining balance of the unpaid fund, or if no claims are on file, the entire unpaid fund shall be released and paid to the contractor in accordance with Iowa law. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution for final acceptance and closing final project costs for the public improvement contract with Tricon General Construction for the elementary school computer lab project as read. Any discussion? I just wanted to remind you the budget on that project was two hundred dollars to $250,000. Again, closed under budget and it was a real success. Okay. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve change order number one to buy state masonry incorporated on the senior stone repointing project in the decreased amount of $13,995. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve change order number one to buy State Masonry Inc. on the Senior Stone reporting project in the decreased amount of thirteen thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars even. There's your $5,000. Thank you. <laughs> I knew it was coming back. Those of you keeping score. Yeah. <laughs> it was, this was simply unused allowances, allowances yeah. we had there for concrete uh, injection repair, steel reinforcement repairs, and it wasn't used. So okay. we're back in the black. Outstanding. And I, I think there's some relevance here that there is, there is genuine, genuinely an effort to keep costs down. I mean, you know, the old adage is when it's tax money, it's nobody's money. I, I don't, you know, I think we do a solid job of spending the money as if it were our own money. And you can't spend the same dollar twice. And so it's, you know, money that we spend on one project can't go to another building. So it's great that, we're, that we do take it seriously. Not that other groups don't, but we, I think we take it a little extra seriously. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. I move that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution for final acceptance and closing final project cost for the public improvement contract with Clower Construction Company, whereas on June 9, 2014, Dubuque Community School District entered into a construction contract with Clower Construction Company of Dubuque, Iowa, contractor for the construction of certain public improvements generally described as the Jefferson Corridor Locker Replacement Project. project. And whereas on February 10, 2014, Dubuque Community School District entered into a contract with Anderson Design and Consulting Incorporated, architect, for architectural engineering design services associated with the above project. And whereas on September 25, 2014, architect filed a certificate with Dubuque Community School District certifying that the contractor had substantially completed the construction of said public improvements in accordance with the terms and conditions of the contract and plans and specifications. Whereas the architect has now submitted subsequent report, change order bonds, and pay application to Dubuque Community School District recommending that the project be accepted by the district as finally complete. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Dubuque Community School District, Section 1, that said reports and documents of the architect are hereby approved and adopted. Section 2, that said public improvement is hereby approved and accepted as having been fully completed in accordance with said plan, specifications, and form of contract. Section 3, that the total contract cost of the improvement yet payable under said contract with the Clower Construction Company is hereby determined to be $6,804.72. Section 4, that $6,804.72 of the total contract cost yet paid should be retained for a period of 30 days following this board's actions to f action to finally accept this public improvement project pursuant to the requirements of Iowa Code 573.14. If at the end of the 30-day period claims are on file as provided by the Dubuque Community School District shall continue to retain from the unpaid funds a sum equal to double the total amount of all claims on file. The remaining balance of the unpaid fund, or if no claims are on file, the entire unpaid fund shall be released and paid to the contractor in accordance with Iowa law. You need oxygen? I think I'm okay. Terry, you're taking over one meeting too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education adopt the following resolution for final acceptance and closing final project costs for the public improvement contract with Clower Construction Company on the Jefferson Corridor Locker Replacement Project as read. And I'd like to add that this project's going to close $845 under budget. <laughs> <laughs> Just squeaked her through. Cutting it closed. <laughs> I happened to go up, go up to Jefferson one day for a football game, and I saw the lockers there. They're a well-needed yeah. uh, enhancement for the school, uh, and they look great. It's a game-changer right. up there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Do, do, Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much, Bill. Do we want to go forward with the quarterly budget? I think we were just going to ask Joni if we... Is there a policy requirement for us to do that, or can we push that back? Can we, Kevin did just send me a message. He apologizes. It yep. really had an emergency to take care of. So yep. we push that back to either the meeting in two weeks uh, or into the meeting in, deadline in November. Do yeah. Okay. Do we need a... Do we don't need a table or anything, do we, on this, Joni? We need a motion. We just simply don't make the motion. Okay. Okay. So we are striking item zero to approve the quarterly budget report. Great. All right. Uh, that uh, brings us to educational programs, policy, strategy, committee report. Ms. Ryan. Nothing other than what was in the consent agenda. We went over, we talked over the um, um, grading for performance behavior and talked about tweaks that need to be done with that and how it needs to be looked at before it goes any further and um, just kind of briefed on you know, um, dress code 
um, just throwing out, you know, discussion of what needs to be done or looked at as far as what's acceptable and not starting with, you know, faculty. Nothing, no, no changes, nothing was done, nothing was decided, it was just a conversation. Shirley did uh, present some um, straw poll numbers, they weren't official, but on, on uh, kids in the high schools with uh, known mental challenges and, and, um, and mental illness issues, and, and I think uh, all of our eyes got a little big because the numbers were a lot bigger than anybody expected. Um, so again, I, I applaud Stan and Shirley for bringing the, that to the meeting because and you know, we can't do anything about it unless we start talking about it. But. Well, those numbers really are reflective uh, of one of the reasons why we're making you know, mental health one of the legislative priorities this year because those numbers are larger, I think, than, uh, than most people would suspect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, brings us to new business. <coughs> I move that the Board of Education approve Title I program plan as submitted. Second. That's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the Title I program plan as submitted. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I move that the Board of Education approve the 2014-15 Board Committee assignments as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the 2014-15 Board Committee assignments as submitted. Any discussion? Tara will oh. be able to read all the lines. Yeah, after hearing Barton read, you yeah. can see why I'm on yeah. the other committee. I hope you listened well oh. to what Tom read. <laughs> oh. We'll be there for more. Good support. luck, Tara. Yes. Thanks. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I have two proclamations. If you'd let me read those, and then we'll take the motions accordingly. Um, the first deals with School Bus Safety Week. Um, proclamation reads, whereas the Dubuque Community School District takes great responsibility and pride in transporting students to and from schools and related activities, and whereas our fleet of vehicles support or transport students over one million miles during the school year, and whereas the dedicated bus drivers, mechanics, and attendants in the district are constantly committed to the safe travel of our students, and whereas parents, motorists, and community members can join us in supporting school bus safety by adhering to school bus related traffic laws and school bus pro protocols. Now therefore, I, Michael J. Donahue, on behalf of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education, do hereby proclaim October 20th through the 24th, 2014, as School Bus Safety Week, signed this 13th day of October 2014. I move that the Board of Education approve School Bus Safety Week Proclamation. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the School Bus Safety Week Proclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, the second proclamation uh, uh, deals with Principals Month, and it reads as follows. Whereas principals and assistant principals in the Dubuque Community School District are vital members of the district's leadership team who hold primary responsibility for the well-being of our school communities, and whereas they are expected to play many roles in our schools, including that of educational visionary, instructional leader, community builder, uh, facility manager, budget analyst, and assessment leader, and whereas principals set the academic tone for their schools and work collaboratively with teachers and teacher leaders to develop and maintain high curriculum standards and set performance goals and objectives, and whereas they regularly go above and beyond to ensure that our schools provide the most positive learning environment for each and every student regardless of the barriers they face. Now therefore I, Michael J. Donahue, on behalf of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education do hereby proclaim October 2014 as Principals Month, signed this 13th day of October 2014. I move that the Board of Education approve the Principals Month Proclamation. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education approve the Principals Month Proclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. I move that the Board of Education take no further disciplinary action related to student number 711980 at this time. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the Board of Education take no further disciplinary action related to student 711980 at this time. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. 
brings us to board member administrative issues. First to the board, any? Okay. A reminder, we're meeting October 30th at 8 a.m. Is that correct? You stole his thunder. He's going to do a preview of the upcoming board oh, meeting. Do but you're absolutely okay. right. That is I'm the sorry. time. So. Mr. President, yes, sir. just a, a minor uh, uh, acknowledgement. We had uh, a, a shift in our leadership for the various committees. I want to thank uh, Mr. Barton for his chairmanship of the uh, uh, Support Services Committee and Mr. Strelo for his uh, stewardship. Ms. Ryan. Oh, Ms. Ryan. well, you look so much alike. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, now he, he, uh, he had a rope we could Ms. throw Ryan right now. For, uh, a hook. Uh, for her stewardship and all those who serve on this uh, board who do so selflessly and uh, a lot of commitment of time and effort. So we thank want to thank those people. Thank you, Mr. Brighteen. Good point. All right. Uh, preview of upcoming board meetings. Absolutely. October is a great month for us. Uh, we not only get to have this. Uh, uh, business meeting of the board, but we have a strategic plan update on October 27th, followed by a uh, work session on the morning of the 30th, uh, where we'll talk about uh, not only the strategic plan, but where next, you know, big picture items down the, looking down the road uh, beyond the strategic plan and what we ought to be setting the table for, the stage for uh, in the future and the education of the students in Dubuque. So both of those uh, hopefully will be uh, very enlightening uh, and uh, great conversations. Absolutely. All right. With that preview, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>